Now introducing your 2015 Illini Drive All-Stars. The sophomore social media guru from Naperville, Illinois, Mr. Jeff Omer. Second, the senior co-host and one half of the Twin Towers from St. Charles, Illinois, Steve Bourbon. Third, his counterpart, the always sarcastic and a fan of no team on the show, senior co-host Sam Sherman. Last but not least, the senior producer from Chicago, Illinois, Torrance Sorrell. Hello and welcome to Illini Drive on WPG 1071. I'm Sam Sherman, your host, joined alongside my co-hosts, Steve Bergen. Jordan Wilson, how are you guys doing today? Good. I'm glad that you're wearing a shirt of yourself on it. Yeah, yeah. On the, uh, That's so Sam Sherman. <laughs> yeah, it is. On the video stream, you can see uh, I'm wearing a shirt that has me on it. <laughs> are those available for sale anywhere? No, people have asked me that before, and I've always considered it, but uh, but not, not yet. It looks like it's been worn quite a bit, too. It really has. Yeah. I wonder, I think it's probably been worn more than it's been washed. But that's that's not the ratio you're looking for. We have other people, <laughs> other people here with us. The very important Torrance Sorrell. How are you doing today, Torrance? Good man. You know, just staying, staying warm in the weather. You're very yeah. nice. And and our social media guru Jeff Omer. Jeff. Jeff, a little under the weather over there. Yeah. A little under the weather, guys. So I'm gonna keep it pretty quiet. The, 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 the <laughs> flu game, Jeff Omer. The flu. Yeah. No. It's, it's you're gonna you're gonna do your best social media work today. <laughs> My game is so sick. You guys <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, yes. Yeah, so uh, we are going to have a really exciting show today. We're talking some Illinois basketball, um, some big games coming up for them. Then we're going to actually have uh, the Daily Line is Brett Lerner in here to, to talk some uh, women's basketball, something that um, we'll be talking about today. And then we also uh, have a special segment with Champagne's Mayor uh, Don Gerard, uh, who we talked, who gave, gave, we talked about with him earlier. He talked with, uh, some unofficial with us. That is a thing that is happening this week. And he I was, didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, just finding out about about it now. Uh, the, the mayor will fill us in on, on some of that and kind of what to expect. And then after that, um, we're going to talk about a lot of things, kind of just general. Who knows? Who knows? It can be. Yeah, that's why you got to stay tuned. We might have some random. Yeah, stay tuned. We might have some random. Uh, uh, Baseball talk, as much as Steve dislikes that, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to definitely talk about some of those Bulls injuries because right now they That's don't really have many players. <laughs> uh, Steve, your boy, uh, Steve's a Purdue fan for people who don't know. Uh, your boy, Etwan Moore, might even get some minutes. He might get more than uh, zero minutes played this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you guys saw this. This is a quick sidebar. I know we have important things to talk about. But uh, during the Clippers game, he checked in with like four seconds left in the quarter for so like Heinrich wouldn't foul someone or something stupid. Anywho, so he checks in for defense and then the Clippers just throw it out of bounds and no one touches it. So then they immediately took him out for Aaron Brooks for offense. Oh my So he, he came in and played zero seconds. But really like where the Bulls are right now, who knows? Like you can't tell me he's gonna do a worse <laughs> job than Kirk Heinrich. I, I, I'm actually with you on that, and we'll probably discuss a lot more of that later. Yeah, we should. Um, well, and we also tore through some tickets to give away, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've got some tickets. That's the other thing. <laughs> uh, if, if you call in to, um, I believe, 217-337-1071. I don't believe. I know. 217-337-1071. Uh, we're giving away tickets to Senior Day, Senior Night. Senior Night. Senior, senior, night. senior Late Night. Late Night. 9, Tonight, 9, 9 p.m. on Wednesday. Bring your coffee. I want to talk about that a little bit, too, today, because that's a late game. Uh, uh, and so there's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm going to be curious to know what kind of crowd they get. But they're playing Illinois basketball, taking on Nebraska, uh, Nebraska ball. Tim Miles, you know, funny guy, uh, uh, Twitter guy, Twitter guy, yes. half halftime Twitter guy. Ever, always tweets during halftime, so uh, he's bringing his uh, Cornhuskers to Champaign late game uh, on Wednesday. And we have we have um, some tickets to give away for that. So at the end of the show, uh, call us at two one seven three three seven one zero seven one. Um, to talk a little bit more about some, some Illinois basketball, uh, this is the point of the season when you know people start to get a little nervous, especially the place that Illinois has put themselves in, mm -hmm. where they certainly are still in it, they're in it, in it being, or on it I should say, the bubble of um, the tournament, not being the NCAA tournament, um, but nothing is, nothing is really certain. Like, where do, you, where do you guys think right now the confidence levels are you know we're always talking about this especially around this time of year where, where should that be for this team I think I think cautiously 
optimistic, but not overly so. I, I, I think they have, they certainly have a chance to win each of their past next two games. You know, with Nebraska at home and then at Purdue. You know, at Purdue will be tough. You know, Nebraska they've got two really good scorers that makes things tough. You know, if they get hot. Um, but there's certainly there's no unwinnable games out there. I mean, Illinois can go and, and win both of those. And then, you know, going into the Big Ten tournament, outside of Wisconsin, there's no team that Illinois can't beat. You know, I mean, they've, they've taken down, right now, they've taken down, like, number two, three, and five. I think Ohio State jumped in the top four. Mm-hmm. But they've beaten Maryland. They've beaten Michigan State. They've beaten Purdue. They've beaten all the good teams in the Big Ten other than Wisconsin, but no one's beaten mm-hmm. Wisconsin. Yeah. So I would say cautiously optimistic, but, I mean, with the Big Ten this year, you literally never know. Mm-hmm. I would probably agree with that. Sorry, I'm going to apologize. I'm a little under the weather as well. I've been spending too much time next to Jeff Omar. I don't know if I should be Multimedia right class. Yeah, no, no, it's probably not safe. You should probably yeah, You probably person. will get sick if you say that. <laughs> but um, I think we talked about this a little bit last week um, when we were looking at the four games that are now two left. They lost that one that I thought they were allowed to lose. So I think that they absolutely need to win these next two to have a serious conversation. Also because they need Purdue to fall a little bit. Again, going back to the seeding of that Big Ten tournament, getting that eight or nine seed is going to put you up against Wisconsin, and that's going to make it tough to get past the second round. So I think that they stick. And that's not to say they could easily lose. In the Big Ten, any team can lose to anyone. I think many of the coaches in the Big Ten would agree with that as well because they've said it many times. And seen, but, it, seen their team. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'm absolutely. I mean, Rutgers beat Wisconsin at one point this season. Let's not forget that. I mean, guys, Northwestern had a four-game winning streak. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's something that happened. Over three teams that beat yeah. Illinois. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah, think about that one a little bit. I um, want to. <laughs> <laughs> but then look what Illinois did to Northwestern. I mean, mm-hmm. it can go any way. So that's not a guarantee that Illinois will make it past the first round. But if Illinois wants a fighting chance going into that Big Ten tournament, they would probably rather be on the other side of the bracket from Wisconsin. I mean, that Wisconsin, it, it's as, I've made it in my mind as simple as this. If if you have to play Wisconsin, that is the exit out of the Big Ten tournament. Yeah. You're not going to be Wisconsin. I know they've been beat, you know, by Maryland, right? And then yeah, Maryland and, and Rutgers, Rutgers so but too. Yeah. they're a machine. <clears throat> and very rarely does a team like that, you know, especially in like a tournament, Situation, or they're, you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna falter against against teams like Illinois. Um, I just think that it's it, at this point you the the only way that they can really be not confident, but at least like watching the the you know, and this is the team and the fans watching that selection um, selection show with interest is if they win Nebraska, Purdue, and then you know you get one in the tournament and one in the tournament. Yeah. So what if what if they win out in the regular season and have a first round exit in the, in the Big Ten tournament. In or out? I would that, say out. That puts them at how many losses that would 12. be? Twelve. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean I think that what's like really, a twenty one and twelve. Yeah. It's tough. I mean they right now I think and we kinda of talked about this earlier, but one of the things that is hugely helping them right now is Baylor. Baylor. Talk yeah. about Baylor for a second. Like this is like <laughs> Baylor we didn't know was good back in like November. They played them out in Vegas. Yeah. And uh Got a really, really solid win, uh, Illinois did. But Baylor's been on fire recently. Their RPI, they're ninth now. So Illinois has two RPI top ten wins, Maryland's ten, Baylor's <coughs> nine. And, you know, they're right in the thick of things for the Big 12. I mean, everyone's kind of chasing Kansas, but they're that group of about five teams. They're all ranked 18 to 25. Right there in the Big Twelve, they're right in the middle of that. You know, Rico gathers. Rico gathers. Yeah, yeah it sounds like he could like double as like a you know a cornerback, you know, like a feisty <laughs> cornerback, you know, for a team or something like yeah. that. Leads leads the co- uh, country mm-hmm. in rebounding. I mean, he's averaging almost twelve boards a game. It's it's something where like if you think about it too much, your head starts to hurt. Like how Illinois beat them. Right. And I guess maybe they just hadn't locked into their season yet, obviously. But I think that if you're an Illinois fan, then you you just you don't really think too much about that when you just say that's a that's a big win and that's one that on Selection Sunday could end up doing big things for them if they're truly right on that, that bubble, which it looks like they'll be. Well, and look think, at, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I mean, just look at how teams change. I mean, Purdue lost to Gardner-Webb in North Florida, and now they're, you know, 11-5 and five in the Big Ten. I mean, so, I, it, yeah. you know, who knows how, how they progress and, and yeah. look at how much Baylor's progress. I think an important thing to look at with that Baylor win, though, is just look at Illinois' schedule. Go through it at any point and look... Anytime they're away from home, how they do. Outside of that tournament, 
they really haven't done that well. Yeah. They beat Mizzou at neutral site. The only other quality one, I mean, yeah, they beat Northwestern, and sure, everyone was saying, you know, hottest team in the country, whatever. That got put to rest yeah. last week. Um, so you beat Northwestern at their place, but beating Michigan State's really the only other convincing away from home win you've got, both on neutral site and road. And going to the Big Ten tournament, people were like, oh, you know, it's in Chicago. That should help them. I mean, didn't mm-hmm. help them when they played Oregon at the United Center. Yeah, no. So their struggles away from home are a big factor looking forward too because they just don't seem to be able to win. And granted, they've played some tough teams like Miami and Villanova, um, and they beat Baylor in that tournament, but it's still a little unsettling for Illini fans looking forward, I would say. And that puts so much importance on the Purdue game to get mm-hmm. a quality road win over mm-hmm. another fellow bubble team because yeah. Miami, you know, they're right there on the bubble too. I think they're in the they're like the fifth team out right now. Mm-hmm. Lenardi's saying changes every day, but yeah. <laughs> I mean they're right there too. So, I mean, th- I think that like it, what what it really gave me, especially this season, what really gives you kind of perspective, especially around this time, is you look back at those games like the the road loss to Michigan when they basically had that one in the bag and they kind yeah. of just blew it. You know, at the time when you think, oh, they can recover from this or it's too early. You know, I I know that you know you, you may think like. There's, there's recovery going to come back, but like that win now, I'd say, let's say they had won that game, which they really should have won. Yeah. We're, we're not, this conversation is, for a lot of fans especially, is, is a lot less nerve wracking because you're already talking about, you know, if you can get that Nebraska win, you're probably comfortable. Yeah. Um, so, really, when you say like every game is important, every game is important. And even in Purdue's case, I mean, just the team they're going to finish out the season with, those two games that they absolutely should have won. Yeah. Against uh, North Florida and uh, that, that's the whole point that you don't know their name. Exactly. Gardner, that was intentional. Gardner, 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 Gardner Webb. Yeah. Um, if they had won those two games, then there, then then you're talking about you know a pretty solid seeding for them even. Yeah. Um, but of course things change and and but but Purdue actually since then, like you said, has really picked it up. Um, something I just kind of real quick I, that we were discussing right before the show. I want to talk about Nana Agu for a second and his impact. Sure. And Jordan, you were a little bit, you were, not, you think that next season won't be as badly uh, impacted. I don't, losing him. I'm not trying to take anything away from what Nana Egwu has done for this team because it's unquestioned that he is a leader on this team that's really helping them get through some of the rough patches and he has a very strong defensive presence. But I'm saying that when he goes, Illinois isn't going to be left with their hands up saying, oh, what do we have now? I think that with Darius Paul returning and having matured now for the two seasons they've been with it, like connected with him but not having him play for them, um, I think that that probably helps them in their favor. And I don't think that the center position is going to be losing all that much. I mean, it's, you're not going to replace Nana Egwu size for or staff for stat, but I don't think it's as big of a concern as people may think. Mm-hmm. Steve, what do you think? I... I know, I really disagree. I, I'm, I, <laughs> That's fine. I'm just going to put yeah. it bluntly. Uh, I, I think, I, I said before the season, in a column that apparently no one read, uh, that... Uh, Don't worry, apparently news, nobody read my Defend Beckman column. But. As much as you tried to push that, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, despite yeah. your best efforts. Uh, I, I said, when Tracy tours ACL, the only player that would have been worse was not Agu. Mm-hmm. I think he is he's pivotal to everything they do, both on and off the floor. He he's, His intangibles are off the charts. This defense is incredible. And you think about next year, I mean, yeah, Darius Paul, he's you know, he's the Mac freshman of the year uh, when he played, and then he's been tearing it up in JUCO. But he's still, this is still going to be his first Big Ten experience. And big guys, it's a lot harder for them to come in and make an impact at a young age. You just need the reps. I mean, yeah. like even Mordbert, both of them, <laughs> like they, you know, they might end up being great players. But, you know, they just haven't had the playing time, and they'll still have those moments where they're lost. So, I'm, you know, when you, when you have no real backup plan other than those three guys, I think there will be trepidation just because, you know, you haven't seen these guys consistently sort of step up to the plate yet. And obviously, well, against, you know, Northwestern, um, Maverick Morgan and Austin Colbert were, were, good. were actually pretty good. But, yeah. but still, you're going to win at, with youth and, you know, just, you're just not getting a lot of playing time. Going to next year, that's I think that'll 
obviously hold him back a little bit. Well, I feel very strongly about this, but I do not see a scenario where Maverick Morgan slips into Nana Egwu's shoes comfortably. <laughs> I just don't see it. I mean, yeah, you don't want to knock his performance. I mean, 10 points, 8 rebounds, almost had a first a good sign. double double. A good I mean, sign. Great. Both highs, yeah. But there's just too much meh about him, I guess. That's the only he way looks, I can really put sometimes that. Sometimes he just, but, like, he's one of these guys who just looks like, and again, I mean, it's, it's playing in the Big Ten. It's a big adjustment from... Uh, you know, I know he's a couple years in, but it's that thing where some, you know, he'll get the ball and it's almost like he just forgets what to do with it. And and, yeah. and that's what I do when I watch the games down there. I, I watch Gross's face to see how he reacts to things <laughs> Mav does, and more often than not, it looks like he's getting a little frustrated and just little things like that, and that's to be expected. He's a sophomore, like Steve was saying about bigs. It takes some time to get them in there and work them around. But going back to Steve's point a little bit, I 100% agree with your comment about Nana Egwu for this season because losing him would have been detrimental. Mm -hmm. But that's only because there was nothing else this year. At least next year. I'm not saying it's going to fill Nana Egwu's shoes at all, necessarily, but you've got him and a more seasoned Mav. The two of them plus Finky coming off red shirt. Yeah, I forgot about Finky. I think that you've got three of those to fill that kind of big man shoes. And Laron, hopefully not... I was saying you could crazy. go Indiana small and put LeBron right. at the five and just run and go. They, just because, but you better be able to like actually shoot. Right. Just well. because Illinois fans have gotten used <laughs> to this massive presence down there doesn't mean they can't go a little smaller with a little more depth mm. and still be just as effective. Maybe it's trying to, time to try something new because this is the second of three years that Illinois is in a situation where the tournament's not like, oh yeah, they'll probably. Not. I mean, it's really it's down to the right wire here. Yeah, right mm-hmm. there. He's 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 hiding the weeds, you know. He's gonna what pop out. He's six three, he's six four. He's six six. That's not yeah. Tall. He's six six. No, that's that's uh. He's, that's, a, he's a big. He's a big. Yeah, yeah he's a big. He's a big he'd be a big on like like the high Indiana. school. If you six six. In fact, Indiana just got a a couple weeks ago. They got a guy off their football team. He's six six, and they considered him like like depth at the big man. Well, yeah, I mean they had, they had no one taller than six seven when. Moscow Pareo is out. Yeah, I mean, and you know, hurt. if this comes back to bite me in the ass, then feel free to call me out on it at some point. But Don't worry, we will. Yeah, we have no <laughs> Cameron Liss being factored into the depth probably isn't going to happen, especially next year. You know what? If if that comes back to bite you... I just wanted him to score this year, and he I, did. <laughs> if he that comes did. back to bite you, I, I won't say anything, you know, because it'll probably be like so wacky that like... Yeah. Right, yeah, laughing, exactly, but, but that's exactly my point. Yeah. It would have to be wacky for him, so... In my thinking, <laughs> doesn't factor, and that's kind of like when the, the beginning of the season I was like, "Oh, Michael Tula may be a point guard when Tracy went down." No, it wasn't in my it wasn't in my <laughs> yeah, discussion. Yeah. I had Jalen yeah. Tate and Ahmad Starks to think about. Well, um, well, we are going to take a quick break here on Line I Drive, but when we return, we're going to have uh, women's basketball reporter Brett Lerner uh, in the studio uh, from the Daily Line to talk some uh, some Illinois women's basketball. Uh, we'll be back in a second. This is Will Leach. You are listening to Illini Drive on WPGU. And now, go shave your head like John Gross. Welcome back here on Illini Drive, just past 620. And we've got DA Illini women's basketball reporter Brett Lerner on the show. Brett, what's up? Not too much, guys. I'm excited to be here. My inaugural appearance. I was going to say, the, the debut, the, the call-up to the bigs. I, I know. I, I'm scared. Honestly, I don't know if I can hit the big league pitching. We'll see. Well, we'll see. All right, so we're talking Illinois women's basketball. Uh, they're heading, they have, they just had their senior day right. against Michigan. Yeah. And then they have one more before the Big Ten tournament? Big Ten tournament is the next game. They okay. start on Thursday Thursday. night. They play, uh, so they got this 10 seed. And now, as you guys have probably talked about with the men, the 11, 12, 13, 14 have to play the first round yeah. of the Big Ten tournament. Right. So them getting the 10 was actually a big deal, believe it or not. Now, I uh, heard Bolant was pretty happy about that. Yeah, he was happy. And uh, they're going to have to play Nebraska, who's a 7. Nebraska was a top 25 team almost all year, but they ended up only going 10 and 8 in the Big Ten, so they fell to the 7 spot. Illinois lost to Nebraska twice the regu- in this regular season, but Nebraska only won those games by a combined seven points total. Okay. So Bolton was pretty excited. Uh, it could have gone a lot worse in terms of matchup for them. So six and twelve is how Illinois finished in the Big Ten. I was gonna say, you know, I really couldn't figure out this team. You know, they they opened up 
and got two really solid wins yeah. uh, in conference play and then had a long losing streak. Ivory Crawford was out with injury, mm-hmm. um, you know, and then l- lately they've been feisty, I guess. Kind of what's your, your take on them? Are, are they still moving in the right direction a- as a program? Uh, I'd say they are. Ballon seems like he's a really good recruiter. Obviously, yeah. evident through Shatrice Ch- White, who is a McDonald's All-American that's 100% living up to the hype already as a freshman. Uh, I think his issue right now, this is his third year, coming towards the end of his third year, and he doesn't have all of his players in place yet. Obviously, as you know, in college sports, it takes a while for at least four years, technically, for a coach to get his players uh, onto his roster. So although he has Ivory Crawford kind of holding him over right now, she was part of the last class now that's going to get out and be the last of the players that was in Balance. But uh, he doesn't have enough depth yet, and that was the big issue this year, especially when they lost Crawford. They just didn't have enough depth to come off the bench, especially, I know you're not necessarily the biggest fan of it, but they run this buzz trapping defense, which is really tiring. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have enough depth, you're going to hit a wall eventually. And when they lost Crawford, who's one of their starters and best players, they kind of seemed to hit a wall in Big Ten play. Bounced back at the end, won two of their last three. So the Big Ten tournament could be interesting for them. Well, I want to go down this rabbit hole a little bit with you on on the buzz. (laughs) So for those of you that don't know, Brett, explain to us what the Illinois buzz defense is. Essentially the buzz... It takes different forms sometimes, but it usually looks kind of like a 1-2-2, two, 2-3, two, two, something along those lines, depending on the way they're set up. And it's a trapping zone. And the issue that I have with it personally when watching it... Spoiler alert, me too. Right. Yeah. Well, the issue is it, it takes your post players out of the post sometimes. So if you look at Chatrice White's rebounding numbers this year, they're not overwhelming. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that she ends up guarding a shooter in the corner as opposed to being stuck down low like you'd expect your typical center to be. So you get a lot of weird switches in this, and it gets tough to rebound sometimes, which is uh, what kind of came back to bite Illinois in a few other games this season. Well, yeah, the, you know, the the general consequence of running it is Illinois has been tops at forcing turnovers right. and steals in the conference, you know, each of the past few years, pretty mm-hmm. much since Bolan's gotten yeah, here. Yeah. But then ranks near the bottom at field goal percentage defense and three-point percentage defense. And I think they had a game against uh, Michigan State last Wednesday, which pretty epitomized what the buzz yeah. is all about. They they turned Michigan State over 34 times, and then the Spartans still shot, I think it was 60%. Yeah, so and, they, they lost. Six, and, they, and, and Illinois lost by two. Right. Uh, the Spartans shot 60% from the field and from three-point land. I, my pro- problem is that if you don't force a turnover, it's a layup or it's an open three. Yeah. That's where the issue's really coming in. Uh, If anyone watched their last game, senior day, they beat Michigan by 12. They were up 20 for a a big part of the second half, and Ivory Crawford had five steals. Kylie Simmons had five steals. They kept stealing the ball, and they shot 50. Illinois shot 50% from the field offensively because they got so many layups in transition. But like you said, if you don't get the steals, then if the other team can just move the ball semi-quickly, chances are they're going to get a wide-open three or a pretty open layup. So. What I think, working back to your point, too, about rendering their bigs useless in yeah. that certain situations, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look uh, at Patrice White, and she's, <laughs> she's, she's a, one of their, if not their best player on that team, and she's only a freshman. I mean, she just got freshman All-Big Ten mm-hmm. and an All-Big Ten regular honorable mention. I mean, that's outstanding to have for a freshman. Oh, yeah, she was great. And the other day she went 12 of 18 from the field, 30 points, 7 rebounds. And she's moves well for her size, but she's also got the size to succeed in the Big Ten. The problem with the buzz for her in terms of rebounding is if you just stuck her on the block and said grab rebounds, that's your sole job is play post defense and grab rebounds, chances are she'd average around 10 rebounds a game. But right now she's stuck around 7 because she's flying out to the corner to try and block threes, which questionable at times, especially when you're a team that struggles with rebounding and you don't have enough depth in the post, you need to exploit the rebounders that you have. And, you know, this team, they really have two front court players. It's Jackie Grant and uh, Chatrice White. Yeah. I mean, there's really no one off the bench, you know, to, that can come in. They've tried Nia Odin or Taylor Tuck, and, you know, with, you know, mixed success, I guess you would say. Yeah. But, you know, running running the buzz for a lot of the game, they'll run man-to-man, but... Yeah. Um, it just wears them out, and I, I can see why Ballant won like ninety percent of his games at Green Bay, because bad teams get eaten alive by mm-hmm. them. Like they will, they cannot function offensively. They were great in the non-conference this year, and a yeah. lot of the bad cupcake teams they played, they blew out because they forced a lot of turnovers. Right, but if you you know if you play solid quality teams that can move the ball and and kind of warp the zone, 
if they can move the ball and actually have like a plan against it, I just don't see it working. Now maybe maybe he continues to recruit well and gets these four star kids that that are you know long, rangy, and athletic that can run the system. But as I've seen it for you know, watching over the past two years, I mean, I just I just don't know what the ceiling of it is. You know? Right. Yeah. To me, I, we've talked about this before. To me, it's almost more of a change up. It's like a gimmick. I would yeah. use it for like five, ten minutes a game, let's say, and throw off a defense because all of a sudden you're in their face and they're trapped every time they touch the ball and make a pass. But I don't think it should be your base defense. And just to make it clear, this is kind of Bolant and his main assistant, uh, DeVilbis. It's kind of like their baby. Like, this is their creation. They love the buzz. So I don't see them getting away from it, but what they're going to have to do, obviously, is continue the recruiting to get the depth to be able to use it and hopefully, for their sake, use it to uh, full potential, which... I'm not sure how high that goes. Well, and I think that, um, as you guys said, it also goes down to wearing the players out, too. Right. I mean, as you said, it can only be used so much. So, yeah, it kind of has to be sort of a reserve secret weapon to kind of change things yeah, up. Yeah, that's the said, way I but, view it. But if you try to make it your fundamental defense and you try to go that way 20-plus minutes, the players are going to be gassed. Mm-hmm. There's going to be nothing left for them to do offensively, so you better hope mm-hmm. you get those turnovers quickly. Otherwise, people, players like Chantrese White aren't going to have the impact you want from them. Yeah, and you've seen it at, at the end of their games, or at least you can kind of feel like you've seen it at the end of a few of their games where they just look tired, and there's nothing Bullock can do. He has to play Kylie Simmons at point guard 38 minutes a game. He doesn't have an option, and that's where it gets tough because she's stuck on the floor, and she has no legs under her when she's shooting a three in the last few minutes of the game because she's been trapping all over the floor. So a lot of it has to do with depth, I would say. Um, but even at its full potential, I'm just not sure. In the Big Ten, which was one of the best conferences in the country for women's basketball, how far you can really take it. Predictions, Big Ten tournament against Nebraska? I don't think they'll get over the hump. I think Nebraska is really good, and I think they underachieved throughout right. the Big Ten season. I think they were better than 10-8 and eight in the Big Ten. But Illinois, it's they were that was their team that they played so tough both times they played. Both times they also played them without Ivory Crawford and still only lost by a combined seven points in those two games. So they definitely have a chance. Don't count them out. And then if you look at the bracket just as a fan, the winner of the 7-10 game feeds into the two seed, yeah. which is Iowa, who went 14-4 and in the Big Ten, but Illinois beat, beat them, them without Ivory Crawford for almost the full game. That was actually the game she got injured in. She only played about eight minutes, I think. So uh, they beat Iowa on the road. So they, they have a chance. They, they have a chance. They uh, maybe catch someone off, off, uh, off guard with the buzz. Who knows? But it, it'll be tough. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's coming up this weekend at, in Chicago? Uh, it's in Hoffman Estates at the Sears, Sears Center. Sears Center, yeah. yeah. Suburbs. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to my suburbs. I'm <laughs> there. Um, so you, you want to talk a little Bulls? We got yeah, a couple minutes here. I mean, you know, it's kind of the same old, same old with them. I mean, they just can't get over this injury bug. Obviously, D. Rose last week, Jimmy Butler yesterday. Uh, got his arm caught in a screen, and now he's out three to six weeks with a hyperextend elbow. I mean, is there some sort of bad voodoo going on here, or what? What do they need to do to keep these guys healthy? The way Jimmy Butler got hurt was like the most Bulls thing over the past few years. They've gotten so unlucky, and you feel bad for them, honestly. Like, I'm a Bulls fan, but from an objective point of view, you feel bad because Rose gets hurt, now Butler gets hurt. At the exact same time that Joakim Noah, who played almost the whole first half of the season at not 100%, finally got back to 100%. And Dunlavy just got back, too. Right, exactly. And Miritich is playing well off the bench, and all of a sudden you you lose Rose and Butler, and it was awful watching the end of that Clippers game. They just couldn't get offense without those two guys. I mean, I think Miritich had all the field goals, yeah, all but one <laughs> yeah. point yeah. in that fourth quarter. I mean, it, it was painful to watch. Like 28 points, something like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which was impressive, but, like, isn't going to work without Rose and Butler. They're going to have yeah. to do something else. And now you're back to, like, they have to hold a team to 80 points somehow to get a win. It's going to be yeah. tough watching them until Butler gets back. And the, the defense this year hasn't, hasn't been, been Thibodeau-esque. Yeah, I think maybe that's the addition of Pau Gasol, mm-hmm. you know, with that, that starting five never really locked people down. They can outscore you now, you know, uh, when they were healthy. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. They, they just are seemingly out of depth. You know, and Taj too. Taj is, Taj is in a right in a walking also. boot. Yeah. yeah, didn't do anything in practice today. I mean that. I think outside of the Thunder, probably this year. I mean they're the the most snake bitten team, and, oh, and yeah. have been for whatever the past no, three I'll, years. I'll probably say that Portland's in one year where everybody got injured. 
Oh, I, I was just saying. I was saying this year. Oh, but, yeah. Say, even, uh, you're, you're bringing up Brandon Roy and Greg Oden. <laughs> and and Nate McMillan uh, took time off. The head coach took time off, so everybody got injured. The coach got injured. Probably. <laughs> he could still he could still go hard in practice. I bet. You know, probably make a couple threes. Now, when was the last time the Bulls actually played with their main rotation? Everyone, hundred percent. I think they're about to use their twentieth starting lineup. Yeah. that's insane. That like that's we're on game like sixty. Yeah, like yeah. there's they're just like about that many something. options. I don't I don't know what it is, but yeah, if you have to use twenty lineups within sixty some games, that's not going right for you. With their designed opening day lineup of. Rose, Butler, Dunleavy, Gasol, and Noah. They won seventy nine percent of our games yeah. this year. But but that's under the, like they, they played like twenty games yeah, together. At, at the that. most, I think it was a little less than twenty even. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. So I just wanted to make a quick comment. So they've had what twenty lineup different lineups now. Has Etwan Moore started in one of those lineups? No, not that's not unacceptable. yet. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Not yet. <laughs> he's actually kind of good when he gets minutes, though. He's been that's what I'm impressive. saying. Brett, yeah. you're coming on every week. <laughs> yeah, fine. I'll be here. No, he's been good. I swear. I I honestly think they should play him a little bit at point guard and see what happens. Ooh. Yeah, get worse. Let's just see what. <laughs> not wrong. He can handle the ball. He actually can handle the ball. Who knows? Maybe I mean, when work. when if they ever, sometimes they do the double point guard lines when things got really bad. Um, it's but like to really bad at this point. Yeah, I mean, bro- move Brooks off ball like each one can guard the two he's a little bit bigger he's six four but let him bring the ball up and put brooks at more of a natural right. position as shooting guard i don't know i'm all for it i mean at less minutes for kirk heinrich the better did, I, i'm with you did you see he yesterday shots anymore he's like he, forgotten how to do it he like <laughs> drove in the paint and like spun it around three times <laughs> and then just threw it up in the air oh yeah it looks like to, a video to game no one. Yeah. he like got yeah. stuck in the middle of the air. and just threw it to no one i mean you know, sam you and i were talking about this the other day it's like you know, the Bulls, you know, they showed loyalty to him, like, bringing him back. But, like, it's at over. least, like, like last year or two years ago, like, he could knock down an open shot. Or, like, he plays really hard defense and, like, brings, you know, a toughness and an edge. But now he's such a zero on offense. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. all the other things, it's just not worth it anymore. Especially now when we're starving for points. He just, like, can't be on the floor. It's also sad now, too, because I think now the issues with Thibodeau in the front office are going to get... Um, multiplied even more and obviously yeah. there's been a rift there and unfortunately it looked like things were starting to come together and you were going to get over that because I really like Thibodeau I think he's a good coach I want him coaching my team but I think now those issues are going to come out because you're going to start losing and you're going to have issues to deal with night in and night out and uh, that could turn into a pretty bad ugly ending come this offseason well I mean a lot of the tension has been they think he plays him too hard play. and that's the blame for these injuries yeah. So, I mean, you know, you, you could use it both ways. You know, from Thibodeau's camp, it's, I've had injuries, you know, let give me a full team. Look, Rose won the MVP, and we had the number one seed in the East. Yeah. That's the last time they were healthy. Like, that was, what, three years ago? 2011. Yeah, 2011. Yeah. I mean, you know, so he hasn't had healthy teams, but then the front office says, well, you make them unhealthy. You, yeah, you play Jimmy Butler 46 minutes a night. Like, he's going to get injured, <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Pau Gasol at age whatever, 34, 30. should not be playing 41 minutes, especially when we win by 15. Like, I mean, I, I, I like Thibodeau a lot, but, like, someone needs to be in his ear, like, Tom, it's okay. <laughs> like, put the backups in. This one's over. And he just, he never figured that out. Well, you see how big Thibodeau is? I think nobody don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> nobody don't want to whisper his ear. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> what we, that's what we need, like, Nazi for, you know? Like, <laughs> let him come in there and be like, tips, I'm going in. You know, <laughs> something like that. So, I mean, what do you think uh, the ceiling, we talked about ceiling for women's basketball. What's the ceiling for the Bulls this year? It's tough. I mean, they're, they're going to be a playoff team with how bad the bottom of the east at least the seven and eight seed are gonna end up being i think they'll be a playoff team and i i don't know maybe they'll finish around the six five seed mm-hmm. and if they play well down the stretch they'll pro- that'll probably be where they end up i'd assume uh just because it's one thing to lose rose but now butler's got a wide range of like three to six three weeks to six, yeah. and taj is a huge contributor to this team especially because like you said pow doesn't play defense so when Taj comes in and does play defense, that is a whole different dynamic that he adds that they lose also. So I'd say whichever seed they end up being, they're probably going to get bounced in the first round. Let's go back to that Rose injury a little bit. You know, I mean, when it first came out, everyone thought, done, no more Rose. Rose is gone for the season. But then all of a sudden, oh, 
the surgery went well, he'll be back. I mean, mm -hmm. what does that do for the Bulls versus losing him completely? It's kind of weird because now you have to worry about when Butler and even Taj, because that sounds like it's actually worse. I don't think he'll last five weeks out or whatever, but it sounds like it's pretty bad. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. If Butler hasn't come back yet and Rose is ready to come back, are you still going to throw Rose in without the full arsenal? There's a lot of weird dynamics to that now because he's not the one missing piece. He's one of miss the missing pieces. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, Torrance, you got something over there? Real quick, we have a tweet. Oh, we have a tweet! <laughs> yes! Yeah. Yeah. I bring you guys. Um, um, Jacob91, he says, uh, hopefully Aaron Brooks can channel his inner DJ Augustine and prove to be a great pack backup point guard like Augustine was for them. I, I think he has that potential. I mean, he's the same mold as Augustine and uh, Nate Robinson, who is a free agent right now, by the way, Nate Robinson. In case you know, your little plug for Garden. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just saying. You know, he would look back at that Brooklyn series and then call me back. You know, uh, no, I, I think I think Aaron Brooks is great off the bench, but as a starter, I think he's pressed a little bit too much. He had that two for fifteen shooting night uh, the other take night. Some interesting shots sometimes. Yeah, sometimes he has like an Ahmad Stark shot selection. Oh, so uh, that's so ooh, perfect. That's, that's a perfect that's, analogy. That's, a, that's absolutely. He's been pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Him, but <laughs> I, I will. I will toss this over to Sam. Yeah. You do remember that one random drive to the hoop? Oh. We don't know how it went in at Iowa. That was the epitome of an Ahmad Star shot. He, he wasn't the looking at the hoop. <laughs> was, yeah. was, I mean, he he sprinted down to the other end. Just circus so shot. So I loved shot. it. Well, I hated it. I liked it. I liked <laughs> it because it went in. I'm a right. fan of no one, Torrance, so I had no opinion on it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think the the comparison between the two of those is pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got to head to break. Big thanks to Brett for coming on. Always glad to have you on. Of course. It was fun, guys. Yeah. yeah, we'll be right back after this. Hi, this is Champagne Mayor Don Gerard, and I'm concerned about four things, and that would be police, fire, public works, and Illini Sports. That's why I tune into Illini Drive at 6 p.m. on Mondays on WPGU 1071 FM. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back to Illini Drive uh, here on WPG 107.1. Uh, as you heard there, that was Don Gerard leading us back in to the, um, to the show. He's not actually here right now, but we did speak to him earlier today. It's a little bit of a Illini Drive tradition. Can and you kind of describe that a little bit? I am the liquor commission, uh, commissioner, excuse me, I, and so I am responsible for everybody who has a liquor license, sells liquor, everything and so forth. So, uh, yeah, so I have a, uh, the biggest role, I think. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, Steve Steve and I were talking about this because we, <laughs> it's sort of funny, we were, we, like, we were trying to figure, we, we saw that, you know, I had known that you were a liquor commissioner, but, like, yep. what, what does that mean? So you, you have the control of the license. I have the say over all the licenses and in the sale of uh, all liquor, which is a very powerful position in this town, especially. Especially, so mm -hmm. yeah. So come Friday, like, could, could you shut down? I could, yeah. Just if yeah, mean? I've already, yeah. They're what they'll do is they'll give me like uh, they'll give me the forms in advance, and I sign them in case they need to have an emergency thing. But we've never had to. Never See, had to I told down. Steve this. Yeah, I, I said, I said, the, I said, Don Gerard can shut down the bars, and he and, and Steve didn't believe me. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't, though, because I'm a big fan of uh, of the free market and small business and local business and uh, personal rights and everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, my, my whole take on unofficial, we can talk about it all you want. You can ask me all the questions you want. But, but basically it is, if you are 21 and legally entitled to drink, entitled to drink, you may go into a, a bar or other establishment and order a cocktail mm -hmm. or two, and uh, you are entitled to do that. And it's your responsibility to make sure that you don't infringe upon anyone else's uh, responsibility or rights. So don't don't, don't hurt anybody, don't walk in front of any cars, don't get behind the wheel, uh, be safe, be responsible, and uh, and you're entitled to do that. Blow off a little steam. I'm not sure if you have any other point of reference here, but I guess in Champagne, with the bar age being 19, I guess how does that change on a, a event like this? We raise it to 21, which was actually, uh, you know, not ironically, if you think about it, is the bar owners, bar owners prefer it because yeah. it reduces the chance of... Uh, uh, being hit for you know having someone underage in the bar because everyone's got to be 21 so and you know 
Uh, Any more unofficial has really become sort of an alumni event. You'll you'll see at uh, some of the bars, people 25, 26, 27, just coming back. And these are people who come to town and get a hotel room. You know, they're not someone who goes to their crashes on their friend's couch and sets it on fire and throws it off the balcony. These are people, who, you know, <laughs> people who uh, they come back because they want to see their friends, but they're not quite old enough to come back to the stodgy sort of homecoming events or whatever. Or maybe they don't go to homecoming, or maybe they don't like football, but they like to come because it was something they remembered and they put on a green t-shirt and hang out. So you, what you find is people who are now in the workforce and you yeah. know, coming in from out of town or whatever, and uh, they're just a little more responsible. So What I've heard is like, it seems like every year the the, the big, the, the issue isn't always, isn't usually the students or the, you know, the people here. It's usually visitors. seems to be the visitors. Yeah. Is there, have there been ways, I mean, you obviously can't say, you can't shut, you know, put up a wall and shut out all the outside outsiders, but like, what are ways that, that you know, have been discussed or just trying to like, you know, keep what we've, really happened. We've, we've met him at the train with uh, uniformed officers passing out the list of uh, what the fines are for things. So if some high school kids from the burbs stumble off the train, uh, let them know that, uh, you know, if you try to get into a bar, you're not gonna. And if you cause problems, here's what it's gonna cost you. Um, we've tried to diminish the hyperbole over the local press, too, where they've reported the number of uh, arrests by the hour. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the, and here you can listen to the police feed. It's it's pretty benign. It's I'm very proud of the university students have kind of taken charge of this and you know knock wood they'll keep doing it this uh, you know take responsibility this year but um, you know the biggest thing is just take ownership and if you see someone getting out of hand or whatever if someone's at your house you don't know if you're hanging out and there's someone you know joining the group who's being a knucklehead you know just get them out you know, whatever push them off and we'll take care of them. our, 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 our police and uh, law enforcement will take care of them I feel like that ultimately that does at a certain point, like comes down like people. If you're hosting a party, yeah. you hold responsibility. Exactly, you yeah. do on this day in particular because this was another partnership with especially the property owners, and they make it. They have very sternly said that you know if you're a U of I student and you have a party and there's someone there you don't know, that's your responsibility. So if they do something, if something happens, and uh, you know, a big part of that goes back to. Uh, to the U of I as well. So I mean, a lot of for a lot of people, it's not so much getting a hundred dollar ticket or two hundred dollar ticket. It's getting kicked out of school or you know. So it's a big deal. Is, is it a day that I mean, like, you know, it's obviously a big day for you and, and in preparation for it. Is it a day that like you 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 dread in some ways, considering just all the craziness that goes on and how a lot of that. It's a, it's a statistical yeah. thing. It's like it's like a, it's like a football weekend or anything else when you get like. Um, you have a big game and a lot of people coming in from out of town, you have more people, something more likely to happen. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing I dread. I'm actually, you know, when I was a kid, when I was at the U of I in the 80s, um, even before that, back in the, I remember in the 70s, and it goes all the way back into the 60s, was they used to have Hash Wednesday, which was all the cops and law enforcement and university would just turn your back. If you were within the inside square of the quad, you could do anything. What? Drink. <laughs> it's like the purge. Dope, take psychedelics. <laughs> yes, it was just, and it was just a day where they just said, and it was always very peaceful, and it was always packed, and it was just kids blowing off steam, to, you know, before finals. And, um... You just have that. You have it everywhere. You have it at, you know, at different schools. You see the different parties. And um, I think ours is, it's you know, kids are going to blow off some steam. And, and my concern is that uh, they follow the rules of the state and be responsible. So that's, that's what I'm worried about, you know, because you can't stop large groups of uh, younger people who are away from home for the first time. Mm -hmm. Many of them are, you know, first, you know, first time in the couple of years, whatever, if they're 21 even. You know, just, it just, it's something that's a celebratory thing. I'd rather it be celebratory than civil disobedience. For years, it was civil disobedience. I like the celebratory aspects. Um, I'd prefer if everyone put on green and went and drank, you know, root beer and played darts. But yeah. <laughs> But, uh, That's but I'm crazy. not going to stop him from There was like a, party. a purge day, sort of. Yeah. Like a, yeah. Hash Wednesday. But it was, a pe it was peaceful, you said. Very peaceful, yeah. Man. I've never heard of that. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, you really go do learn something. Back whenever. in the archives, there's some really hilarious pictures. And the pictures. cops would just like... They'd be out there, but they, if you were inside the boundaries of the you know, thing, and mm -hmm. you know, and it was pretty much, you know, people just walk into the inside of the quad. Yeah. And this was the 80s? 80s, 70s, 80s, 60s, wow. yeah. Yeah, because I was in school 83 to 87, uh -huh. and I, uh, I won't say which side of the line I was on. <laughs> 
You were on a I, side I of observed, it. <laughs> I, I observed this. I will, I will say yeah. that I, minimally, I'll say I observed activity on the quad of people smoking marijuana so, and taking mushrooms and I guess drinking like, beer. And, <laughs> I mean, to, to, to include in a way, like, I mean, it sounds like you really, I mean, you, you understand, like, the, that there is the, the blowing off of the steam and the celebration. It's about yeah. personal, it's, you know, you have rights, you have personal freedoms, but you have responsibility. If you're responsible, you don't hurt anyone else, you don't hurt yourself. If it's, you know, if, if it's, if it's within the boundaries, yeah. I understand. And Illinois basketball's got a huge game the next day at Purdue. No, right? So people, at, you know, you don't want people you can't next be day. too crazy because you got to travel to West Lafayette the next day. <laughs> exactly. That's just me. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, yeah so. you know, and there's there's other things going on. Like I noticed this year that there's an organization they're doing the Polar Plunge at Memorial Stadium yeah, for Special Friday. Olympics. Mm -hmm. And I was, you guys may have known that uh, one of your friends from Twitter has uh, shamed me into doing this, so I'm going to go jump. <laughs> in. And that's like at noon. So if you think about it, you know, Saturday at noon there's going to be a bunch of college students who are going to be geared up to go uh, jump in some cold water you know and some they, money for Special Olympics. What they should do is they should have all, a lot of the, they should just start recruiting kids off of Green Street who, are, yep. who look like they're, they've they been drinking, get them, throw some cold water on them, they'd probably they wake right, right up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> give me 75 bucks, we're going to give you a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> throw you in a little pond. Well, right let's cool. <laughs> well, you know, you yeah. think about it, in Bloomington, Indiana, they have the Little 500. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. unofficial with a bike race and yep. a charitable, you know, philanthropic element. They're doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm not stupid you know it's just like <laughs> you guys if you my students i've been saying this you know the more philanthropic endeavor you know angle you can put into it the more people don't it's doesn't bother them so much it just bothers them when you're breaking stuff yeah yeah and hurting people so well don't I break mean, stuff and hurt people for kids. everyone's sake i really do think that i hope that it's going to be not too not too i mean there's going to be craziness but i'll be out I mean, there i'm going to go out you know i'll go out at uh i'll go out at, at around lunchtime and then right after uh right about five i'll go out and start hitting the bars so mm -hmm. i think there's actually going to be an Illini media guy following me around, taking pictures. Oh, and interviewing. cool! Yeah. So I, I, you know, I'll go out and just introduce myself to the kids in line, go in the mm -hmm. bars, just say hi, just kind of check in. So go around, you go, you just go over to the kids. You know, I could shut this whole operation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not hey, going to, but I'm I could. Not going to. Yeah, I could. Yeah. yeah. Play that flashback card around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you so much, Mayor Don Gerard, for coming on. Thanks for uh, making the time. I, I really yeah. appreciate the opportunity. And uh, and what do you guys think, Illini? Going to make it in? You well, it's funny you say that. We, shameless plug. Yeah. We got recruited by our higher-up bosses yes. into doing a, a point counterpoint column to run in tomorrow's paper. Outstanding. Just about that exact thing. So. I look forward to it. Dockage, yeah. uh, Dockage tweeted that uh, we're out now, but we can change that. So. Thanks, right. Dockage. Thanks, <laughs> Dockage. <laughs> now you Hashtag. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. Hashtag thanks, Dockage. Well, for yeah. Sam Sherman and my colleagues, uh, Steve Bourbon and Mayor Don Gerard, thanks so much for, for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks, <laughs> fellas. Uh, welcome back to the to the show here live. Alana Drive. Um, thanks again to, to the mayor, as I said in there, uh, for, for taking the time today to talk uh, to talk to us. It's like it's like an Alana Drive tradition have had the mayor uh, come on because he is the liquor commissioner, which as we learned is a is a big role and an official. Well, it's always good to just have him on every oh, once in a while. Of course. Yeah. No, absolutely, and um, always, always a good, always a good person to talk to. An Illinois sports fan, a big Illinois basketball fan, as we know. Don Gerard is, um, as the liquor commissioner, kind of reminds me of Commissioner James Gordon from Batman. Like he, he's totally okay with the way Batman does some things, but he's still got to follow the law to some extent. He just wants the greater good for everyone. He's not gonna be all uptight about it, but he's gonna be, you know, he's gonna be okay with both sides of things as long as the right thing happens. And seriously, like. Um, from from us here at Illini Drive, at least I speak for myself when I say like you know everyone there are a lot of people, a lot of new people, um, at the, you know freshmen, sophomores, whatever, will partake in activities. Just be safe. Don't be dumb. Because yeah. you can seriously and and he said it in what we were, when we were talking. We're like, it's not even about fines. It's not about um, stuff like that. It's it's you can there's there's much larger consequences that can come from doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Um, whether that's you know getting kicked out of school, whether that's um, you know, getting hurt, or hurting somebody else. Just be safe out there. So you know, have fun. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, just just be safe. Um, you know, have fun, but be safe, and, and make sure that uh, that you're looking out for people as well. I mean, a bit of a throwback from Gerard talking about back in his day. I <laughs> Yeah. I, I like the purge comparison to that. Well, it's like the purge, but like. Uh, but no one dies. No one dies. Just yeah. gets. <laughs> they enjoy themselves. They enjoy, they enjoy themselves. themselves. Yeah. Or you know, if that's if that's the thing you're into. But that was, I mean, that was, I mean, that's crazy that that's the thing. I mean, the, the quad. This was on the quad. Yeah. And the cops would just be like, yeah, have, have fun, kids. I that's inconceivable to me. I could never imagine that happening. 
I feel like it's a, like I just keep thinking it's a trap. Like if they did that now, I'd be like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, well, like when does it end? Do they like, usher people out? Like, all right, like you actually can't do this anymore. They just came in with a big, they just came with a big vacuum or a fan and just like, all right, moving on. No, no, they just like have them all trapped in there and that like you know twelve oh one, just like boom. <laughs> I think a great point that um, the mayor made was um, talking about celebratory versus civil disobedience. Yeah. My dad went to school at ISU in the days when they told them they can't tap a keg past 10 p.m. and all the students rioted until the okay. state police showed up. I mean, that was, that was, the, yeah, exactly. Um, so I think, the yeah, <laughs> they celebrated after they got their way, but, you know, once state police showed up and started dropping gas everywhere, I mean, everyone <laughs> had to kind of disperse, but... <laughs> Um, but I like that point. I think that the more you can emphasize some philanthropic type events along with it, the more you can spin it in the right way, the yeah. better it can be. And Polar yeah. Plunge on Saturday. It just happened up in yeah. Chicago. On Friday. No, on Saturday. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if you're having a rough morning, uh, head out to Memorial uh, Stadium and, and get some real cold water uh, poured on you. Can we get Oz on Beckman doing it? Oh. <sighs> Ooh, we gotta find that out. Oh, we gotta find that out. If we are, we're gonna do a, a live broadcast. <laughs> um, actually, though, uh, there is like I think that you know people will want to make sure they're not feeling too sick on Saturday because there is a big uh, Illinois game against Purdue. Absolutely, and that's gonna be that's I mean that's the season that well the, of course if, assuming that if they beat Nebraska, um, that's just another one of these games down the line that especially this one that they're gonna have to win if they want to make it into the NCAA tournament. It's a big one. Yeah, in Mackey. In Mackey, Mackey Arena. Mackey Arena. Uh, man, March 7th. That day yeah. could go down in history. <laughs> uh, well, thanks again uh, to, to Mayor Don Girard for coming on, and also thanks to Brett Lerner of the Daily Line, the women's basketball reporter talking some women's basketball and Bulls um, basketball. And, you know, by this time next week, the Bulls will probably be, be even more depleted uh, roster-wise. But we'll see what happens. Uh, we talked a little Illinois basketball. Uh, we didn't get to our... Um, Pointless baseball conversation. Which I By design. Pointless. Uh, yeah. <laughs> po pointless maybe from your end of things. No, I'm, I'm baseball is my favorite sport. I'm saying pointless speaking more for my colleague over here, Steve Perkins. It's, it's, it's March Madness right now. Did As you want to look at your phone and see if it was March? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, are you, are you going to be a baseball reporter? Like, how's this working? You are. I Steve, am. <laughs> we're going to be covering the, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but, but he doesn't know about baseball. Okay, that's not true. Oh. I, it's, it's the middle. It's the beginning of March, and you want to talk baseball. I object. One more time, uh, we are giving away tickets for this Wednesday's game against Nebraska. Uh, that is the uh, senior night, late game, nine o'clock. Uh, please call at nine p.m. Please call in two one seven three three seven one zero seven one. That number again is two one seven three three seven one zero seven one. We've got those tickets to give away. Thanks again for listening to Illini Drive. Uh, thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you, Torrance. Thank you, Jeff. Feel better, you and Jordan. You guys gotta gotta get gotta uh, get better. Get I'll get there. Um, Steve doesn't know anything about baseball, and we will see you next Monday. That's Thank all the time we have. <laughs> uh, have, a, have a great rest of the week, guys.